dude, I thought you guys were recording when we came on, man. You never know what's going to happen, dude. Always record. Dude, what's up, guys? It's DJ Barbecue. You got to tune to the Lockdown Barbecue. What's it called again? Hey, guys, it's DJ Barbecue, and you are locked in to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. We're living in unprecedented times. Around the world, medical teams are doing an amazing job in tackling the coronavirus. In the UK, our brilliant NHS, thousands of key workers and volunteers are leading the battle against COVID-19. Many of us are following government advice and staying at home in lockdown. Before the pandemic hit, myself, Neil, aka Barbecue Explorers, and The Smoking Elk had talked about collaborating on a video project for YouTube. The virus put a stop to that idea. However, as barbecue mad people, we are determined not to be beaten, so we have used a bit of online tech to create a new video show for the barbecue community. Welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. Coming up in today's show, the Smoking Elk shows us how to perfect jerk chicken drumsticks on a kettle barbecue. Neil plants veg for grilling this summer. We take a sneak preview at an interview we filmed with best-selling barbecue author Genevieve Taylor. Our special guest is barbecue guru Jim Moore, aka Only Slagging. And we take a look at what you've been cooking over the past week. Hello and welcome to the show. We hope you've had a great week. Thank you ever so much for all your photographs and videos that you sent through to us. Elkie, what have you been up to? Me, um, outdoors cooking, surprise, surprise. Done some uh, fantastic jerk chicken drumsticks, done a nice slow cooked shoulder of lamb, and I've just finished the last of the jerk marinade off on some fantastic sea bream. How about you, mate? We've been outside this week. Now, I know you're not the greatest vegetable fan, but we've been planting some vegetables in the patch. Um, we have a herb patch, if that counts. Come on, let's take a look at yours. I know Elk is not a big fan, but my family love cooking vegetables on the grill. Picking a sweet corn from your garden, placing it on the barbecue and eating it soon afterwards. It's really hard to beat, it's so fresh and the taste is incredible. This is our second year of growing veg and we're newbies when it comes to planting. We started small last year with my sons building a couple of beds which are fairly easy to maintain. We loved the whole growing experience, even though we had quite a few unwanted visitors. This year we're going for it again and I can't wait to get the veg on the grill. However, during lockdown, it's been hard to get hold of seeds, but we've got by. Sweet corn is in, so too are the radishes, courgettes, garlic bulbs and spinach. The tomato plants are going in later today, along with the cucumbers, pumpkins and squash. And I'll be doing regular video updates over the coming months. We have already had one problem though. Strong winds a couple of nights ago have wrecked the run of beans. But luckily, we've grown a few extras, so we should be okay. If you haven't grown your own veg before, why not give it a go this year? and we can share our trials and tribulations together on the show. If you've just started planting, we'd love to know what you're growing, so please send us your photos and your videos. We'd love to see them. The tomatoes are in and it's all coming together. Next week, we've got a very special guest on the show, barbecue cooking author, Genevieve Taylor. Oh, Genevieve was an absolutely fantastic guest. Um, let's take a little look at a clip from the interview. I've got a copy of your book, Chard, um, yeah. and I have uh, cooked a few dishes from it, um, as side dishes and obviously from, from a wife that does eat a lot of vegetables. Um, <laughs> what gave you the idea for Chard? How did it come about? I think it's because um, I eat meat. I, I really like eating meat, but I also really like eating vegetables. And obviously because I grow quite a lot of vegetables, I've often got a glut of stuff. Um, and it just it just struck me that barbecue's kind of like the last bastion of the carnivore, isn't it? That, that's, that's what it feels like, you know. Um, and actually, if you think barbecue is obviously a very celebratory meal that you would share with your friends and your family, and, you know, people make parties of it, don't they? And any other meal that you would do that with friends and family, like Sunday roast, for example, you'd, you'd have one kind of centrepiece joint, and then you'd have a lot of lovely side dishes that you thought about and it would all come together as a sort of balanced kind of meal. But it struck me that actually barbecue is pretty much the only meal where you might be expected to eat a sausage, 
a bit of steak, a chicken wing, you know, all in the same meal. And I don't, I don't want to eat like that. It's not kind of how I want to sort of eat. So, so for me, it was about making the whole thing a bit more omnivorous and a bit more balanced. If you want to see Genevieve's interview in full, then check out next week's show. It's a great watch. Now it's time for Elke's second part in his Two Zone cooking series. So last week I showed you how to set up your kettle barbecue for two zone cooking, essentially turning your barbecue into an outdoor oven, adding smokiness and fiery flavour to your food. This week I'm going to put it into practice, I'm going to show you how we cook chicken drumsticks indirect on a kettle barbecue. So we've lit the fire, we've got the coals burning, we've tipped the coals out, we've put them to one side and we've closed the lid to warm the barbecue up. Let's show you how we do the rest. We're at 200 and we're just going to place the chicken, like I said, over, away from the fire. This is known as the indirect side. And then pop the lid back down. So you can see there how simple it was to turn the kettle into an outdoor oven with the added smoke. So that chicken is going to be taken on the smoke, taken on the lovely flavours of the fire. 45 minutes in, the chicken is looking fantastic. Just give you a little closer up of that chicken. And now we're just going to move it over to the direct side just to finish giving it a bit of char, a bit more colour and then we're going to dig in. How easy was that? Two zone cooking, put into practice with some jerk chicken drumsticks. Now it's time to take a look at some of what you lot have been cooking over the last week. Happy days. Some great barbecue cookery videos there. Elke, what did you like the look of? The lobsters, 100% the lobsters, absolutely amazing. I totally agree, they look fantastic. Now Elke, our special guest this week is Jim Moore, a good friend of yours. What can you tell us about him? So Jim has been consistently smashing out good food and good content over the last few years. Let's take a look at the film. Jim, welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. How are you and your family coping in lockdown? Thanks guys, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're all doing quite well. Um, it was a bit of a shock the first sort of week having to stay in, but now we're, we're sort of settling in a nice routine, routine every day. Uh, get up, we've got work done, do a bit of cooking out in the garden. Everyone's looking nice and prim and proper, so uh, not doing too bad. So Jim, I absolutely love your Instagram page, um, especially yeah. love following the stories. I mean, your, your stories are always an absolute joy to watch. Um, when did you kind of first get into barbecue as a kind of serious hobby? Probably the last five, six years. Um, sort of, I got a couple of the Weber Master Touch and everyone sort of moved on from there. I've been using a whole pair of different barbecues prior to that, but we bought uh, what was referred to on the Instagram uh, account there as the twins. And we got two twins, built them up over there in the corner. And uh, yes, from that, I sort of tried to really push what you could do on the barbecue then after that. So. It all really started a bit more seriously from there, but I've always been into this. Um, you know, at least 20 years now, we've been sort of cooking outdoors and picnics and all that sort of stuff, so. Amazing outdoor living space. What gave you the inspiration to create it? <sighs> the poor weather here in Northern Ireland. <laughs> we were, uh, we try to cook outside as much as we can. So uh, normally we're about four or five nights a week we would cook outside. Um, at the moment we're doing probably six or seven cooks uh, per week outside, um, but, Trying to do that, especially during the winter months, um, 
when we had no cover or no shelter or any of that, it was quite difficult. Uh, so the area that I'm in here now used to be a bit of dead space in our garden. Um, so we were sitting just across the way there. I said it'd be fire pit one night, had a glass of wine going. The wife and I just finished cooking. And we were sitting having a bit of a chat. And uh, I sort of said, you know, this area we have over here, it's dead space. We should do something with that. And then we sort of came up with the idea of putting a cover on and it sort of evolved. So we spent about 12 months, I would say, after that, trying to work out the design we wanted, how we wanted it to uh, sort of fit in with our garden and uh, what sort of features we wanted to fit into it. So it's, it's always evolving. It's always changing. Um, but that was really the idea, to get somewhere we could use, beat the feel, have the feeling we're outside all year round. Um, and that's why we left it fully open on one side. Um, mm. We want we like the idea of sort of sitting here, but still being able to look out in the garden, no barriers, and you feel you're outside, but you've got the warmth and the heat, and sort of uh, the protection from the elements. I, I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. Whenever I see it all year round, it looks fantastic. But when, when, uh, when I see you kind of get it winter ready, uh, ready for Christmas, <laughs> and you get it all cosy, you get the sofas in there, you got the blankets in there, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, what what how yeah, do, what season do you prefer the shack? Do you prefer it in the summer or do you prefer it in the winter? Um, I think I probably prefer it more in winter um, just because we can be out here and it can be snowing, it can be raining, it can be whatever. And we have like heat lamps and stuff here. So I turn the heat lamps on and we're cosy as sitting out in here. Sometimes you put on the wee blankets or something like that, but it's lovely in here when, uh, in winter, especially around Christmas time uh, when we change it into that sort of sort of grotto -y type sort of place. Um, but I think in summertime, I like to try and move the barbecues out and sort of cook outside under the sun and stuff like that on the odd days we get the sun. You've amassed a great collection of grills. What's your favourite? <laughs> What's my favourite? Um, that's a hard one. It depends on what bracket we're talking about. Um, so if it's the ceramics, obviously the Kamado Joe. Uh, I've got the big Joe here now behind me. So that's my favourite one now at the moment for the, for the ceramics. Um, but I still really enjoy the, the Weber Master Touch. Um, I think that's because it's sort of started with those, really enjoy cooking with those. And then that's what I use for teaching at my barbecue classes is the Weber Master Touch. Um, so I sort of have a bit of a bit of a love affair with both of those at the moment and uh, I enjoy using them both. But uh, but yeah, the, the Kamado Joe really does put a smile on my face. It's really, it's real fun, enjoyable field to, uh, to, uh, to cook with and play with. Uh, and then of course we got the Bry Man recently. So I'm really enjoying cooking with that. Um, over open fire, it's a completely different way of cooking compared to the sort of lit down cooking. So uh, I'm sort of I'm quite enjoying playing with that at the moment, sort of getting the grips of how that all plays with. So I couldn't say one particular barbecue, but there's three. I'll give you three. You answered it exactly how I'd probably answer it. <laughs> Very diplomatic. <laughs> but they, they, they all offer different things, don't they? So. Um, well, they do. It's, you know, sometimes you just want to go out there and not have to think about how you're cooking. You just want to bang, stick it on there and cook it and that's it. And the, the Weber Master Touch and the Tomato Joe, they both do that. And um, what I'm quite enjoying now with the Brian Man is I have to think about what I'm doing on it. You know, I have to sort of think about how I'm going to control the fire, how I'm going to look after the fire, where I'm going to put the food. And it's a whole new sort of experience for me to start to play with. So talk, talking about a whole new learning curve uh, with the boy, you've obviously started or recently started some masterclasses um, and obviously COVID put pay to that after your first couple of classes. Um, how enjoyable was it um, doing the classes? Um, and what, what's you, what are you trying to get across in the classes? What are you trying to teach people? It's been brilliant, really good fun putting it all together and sort of giving people sort of hints about how it's going to be when we get there. The days are long. Um, so the classes last about six hours. And we class that class as being basically an introduction to charcoal barbecue. There's loads of people contact me and they're cooking on gas or they're cooking on something else. And they want to, they really want to go back to cooking on charcoal, but they're sort of, they don't know how to get the charcoal started. They're worried about how they, they maybe burn their, their food and that sort of stuff. So it's sort of showing them all the hints and tips that I've amassed over the years I've been doing it and sort of giving it all to them. So throughout that day, we, we do three starters three main courses, and then we do a dessert on the barbecue at the end. Everyone's cooked live there and then. We sort of prep it all. Everybody gets a bit of hands-on, make a few things up themselves. And I think, what, what do we have? I think with eight grills going all at one time. We cover dirty cooking. We cover indirect, direct, um, different tiers, loads of stuff. Uh, so it's all the stuff that we take for granted, but uh, a lot of other people maybe uh, want to come along and see how to do all that, and then obviously try all the food. Jim, you've recently created your new YouTube channel. What are the plans for the future? 
I've always been quite reluctant about getting onto YouTube. Um, a, because I don't have the technical knowledge about how to do all the videos. Um, but there's plenty of guys that bring me loads of support and sort of hints and tips about what to do. So I've managed to get myself there now. Um, it's probably trying to establish a bit of a base on there and get used to try and produce the videos. Um, so we'll see where it goes. I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops. Now, now your wife, uh, Romilly, she yes. sometimes features as the voice behind the camera in your story. She definitely does. <laughs> You can kind of hear the banter, you can feel the banter. Um, is there any plans? To, uh, are we going to see more of Romilly on, your, on Instagram, on your YouTube channel? I would love. I would love Rom to get in front of the camera and do a wee bit more. She can, I mean, she can handle these grills, no problem. Um, so if the camera's not on, she'll be out here cooking away and all that sort of stuff. And uh, She's a wee bit reluctant to get in front of the camera, but I think we'll keep working on her. We'll get her there. You know, we'll get her there. And, uh, and is it she, true? Sorry. So I was going to say, uh, she does, uh, in the classes, the barbecue classes, she runs some aspects of the barbecue class as well. So she knows her stuff. There's no reason why she can't get on camera and do it. But um, but yeah, I would just have to be careful what she says on there, Elke. You know, you never know what she's <laughs> going to come out with. Well, because uh, I've heard a rumour. Is, is it true that you sometimes watch barbecue videos in bed together? <laughs> you have to give me that again, Elke. It's just a rumour I've heard that you sometimes treat the wife to some barbecue videos in bed. Occasionally. Now, we're, we're, we're 25 years married now, you know. Occasionally, we sit there, TV on. Oh, oh look, there's somebody's come on. Somebody on YouTube. Oh, there's Elke. <laughs> so, Jim, uh, plans for the future. Where do you see um, only slagging going from here? Um, I don't really have any big plans or a game plan about where I want to go with this. Um, we're just happy sort of plodding along, doing a wee bit of uh, bits and pieces on, helping people out here online. Uh, spend a lot of time chatting with people on uh, on messages and stuff there every evening. So don't really have any ma massive sort of uh, ambitions or aspirations about where I wanted to go. I just suppose just let it go and see what happens. Jim, thank you for being an amazing guest on the Lockdown Barbecue Show. Cheers, guys. Thanks for inviting me. A big thank you to Jim for being our special guest this week. Thank you ever so much for watching the show, and we'll see you next week. A big thanks for me as well, guys. Keep those fires burning, and we'll see you next week.